Thursday, July 27th, Stan Ehrlich. This is market analysis. And I start out with the stock market indexes <clears throat> on the average. And usually with the spider, which I am showing you right now, the SPY, we have a new high on the opening on a gap up, still in an area of resistance and in overbought conditions for a perfect setup for a potential bearish engulfing major sell signal. But we have to go all the way down to yesterday's low and get below yesterday's low before I get a red bearish engulfing, <clears throat> which we did, for example, way back here on April 22nd of um, April 5th, it actually was of uh, 2022. That's an example. <clears throat> and it could be huge move down. I don't think so because we're still in a bull market. I don't see anything here that looks like it's going to cause any major decline, but we do have a gap to close around 444. I've been talking about that gap for a couple of weeks now. And as we got up into resistance and overbought conditions and the conditions were right like yesterday, for an outside down day, which we did have for a little while until finally at the close, really the last 10 seconds, it closed a little bit higher for the day. No bearish ER sell signal. <clears throat> so it popped up this morning and we have another setup because we've got the higher high <clears throat> and all we need to do is go below yesterday's low. Now, at the moment, we have a bit of a dip the challenge almost exactly the low of the day so far, just a few minutes ago, two minutes ago. If we start breaking below that price level of 457, let's say, a little tiny bit above 457, I think the market's going to come down next to at least unchanged. Remember, we're still up $2 and a third at the moment. And then there's a chance it could really start to slip more. We do have a higher high in the DIA, and we do have the possibility of a bearish engulfing here as well. Now, remember, this hasn't happened yet, so don't jump all over the bear market yet <clears throat> idea here. And it's not a bear market. It's a downside correction to close some gaps. And the DIA has a little tiny gap down around 343. And that's about where I think it's going to come down to maybe only 345 and three quarters. But in that ballpark, plus there's a very small one at 350 that we left behind again about two weeks ago, week and a half ago. So that's the first one, 350. But it seems kind of close. So I'm actually looking for probably uh, 345. The spider, excuse me, QQQs already filled its gap from a week or two ago. And that was four days ago. It's trying to make a new high, but didn't do it. The DIA and the spider are a new high ground completely. The Qs couldn't do it. So I'm looking for a new low for the morning session very soon here. And the beginnings may be of a significant break uh, into areas where the market left gaps behind or support, which is not that far down, not real serious, not getting real bearish on, to any extent at all. QQ, I'm sorry, the Russell 2000 doesn't have any of that except for a lot of good support at lower levels. And looking at the daily Russell 2000 chart, we could come back to a 190 without any problem. And it's up against a large area of resistance at the moment, forming a possible double top, and it's overbought. So we could even get a bearish engulfing red sell signal today out of the Russell also. The only one that didn't get above yesterday's high is the Qs. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. That's wrong. Um, everything got above yesterday's highs. Therefore, having been overbought within the a lot of number of days and the potential of a bearish engulfing, we could get red across the board, all four.
Maybe. Yesterday, we had a bearish and golfing on the E-mini. I usually don't talk about. It didn't work. Market opened uh, late yesterday afternoon, starting, you know, today's date, and ran up and stopped us out. So there was a small loss, but there could be another one. Sometimes we get them back to back or two or three in a two or three week period. They tend to cluster. Let's go to futures. We got something brand new here. But first, let's look at bond futures. Remember that we had the 88-day cycle low. An incredible series of timing points have happened, past tense, in the last six 88-day cycles. And here they are. This one was maybe, maybe a half a day late. This is exactly on time, exactly on time. One day early with a bullish engulfing ER buy signal to boot. And that was June 16, 22. Slightly late, but still in the window of opportunity. That's the WOO. If it's within the green vertical bar, that's the window of opportunity. It's a 10% of 88 days price range left and right, 4.5 days left and right, um, that we're looking for the turning point of the market. And it did happen within the woo. Also, the cycle low earlier than that, October 6th of 21. That's six in a row within the window of opportunity. Pretty phenomenal. Even the cycle highs have been really decent, which by the way, the next cycle high is August 19th, next month, and only about a month away. So I am expecting this market to turn back up as it makes new lows for the day right now. Um, very soon, maybe this low is going to turn out to be very similar to the low that was back on October 22. It came down on a second low and almost made a new low, but a little double bottom. Our cycle picked the lowest low. So maybe that's going to be the same situation. It looks awful close to it at the moment. Okay, enough of the bonds. Let's go with the E-mini. Again, we had a bearish engulfing sell signal yesterday that didn't work in a resistance area. So that doesn't mean it's not going to turn down. It only means the signal itself didn't work. But sometimes you get two or even three, and only one shows up as the highest high, and it does occur during topping out or bottoming out formations. Here you got three. The first two buy signals didn't work. The last third one worked great. So let's see what happens here. Next chart is soybean oil, and that's out of sequence. Let me go back for a second here. Yeah, that's going to be out of sequence. We got overbought, slipping down somewhat. Bear trend may have started, but it's a big, huge sideways situation. So I'm looking for a little bit more of a break. Next chart is soybean meal. Overbought, in resistance, looking for a little bit of a break. Corn, overbought, in resistance, looking for a little bit of a break. All of these could challenge the lows over the last couple of weeks. And wheat, looking for a break. Double topped out at resistance. Not overbought, though. And we're looking for more of a breakdown in the cattle. We had a ER red sell signal at the exact high day. That's why I built this trading automated trading system, ER signals, because it does pick the exact top or bottom day frequently and or help you to be convinced the market is building a bottom or top. Next. We've got a little premature sell signal, a couple of them, but it looks like we're having trouble at this price range. Trend is down, looking for a move down to below 80.4 uh, for a minor downside breakout, which could perpetuate the longer term bear move. So it might not be minor relative to the last month or so it's minor, but it could be much more important than that. OJ, unbelievable. We're at 93 almost on the RSI. <clears throat> this should top out any damn day now and have a really big downside break. But the bull market is in incredibly strong. Um, looking for a sharp break. Next. Same kind of comment for Coco. Not quite as overbought, but overbought for three days. Looking for a sharp break. Next. 
we have a brand new cell signal in cotton at the resistance area that I have been talking about for weeks. This is great. This is exactly where I was hoping to find a whopping, look at this, bearish engulfing ER cell signal. Cotton is going to go back down to the bottom of this trading range, I think. I would fully expect it to drop uh, back to the low 77s. Wow. Right where I wanted it. Overbought conditions in a resistance area. Some of my favorite stuff. Next, sugar the sweet. Got overbought for one single day, three days ago, starting to slip off a little bit. Eh, kind of in an area of resistance. Nothing exact or specific. But I'm still looking for a move down to, you know, 20, 50, that blue zone. So around 20 to 18. Next, coffee. A little bit of a, a reversal here. Nothing particularly interesting about this price range, although it is sort of a resistance. Um, maybe that's it. It might be ready to have a test of the lows here of 155 and start to get below that. Next is our bond futures and then 10 year notes. Good. Coming back to support on the 10 years. Wow. Actually adding a little credence to the idea that this low could look a lot like what happened back in October of last year. Hmm. Next crude oil overbought kind of looking a little bit like uh, another market i just saw a moment ago up in resistance cotton gonna stop in the red zone maybe let's call it 82 and a half uh, another point higher dollar higher and then turn down it's already overbought for a couple of days i'm not sure it can get up there but if it can that would be an idealistic spot you know just a little under 83 for it to turn down and they got heating oil Overbought conditions, I think it's also going to turn down soon. And natural gas has already started to slip uh, in an area of resistance. The trend is definitely down. It's been kind of neutral flat for quite a while, several months. But I see no bottom yet. Uh, this is how they could be built. But I see no evidence of it. Um, looking for lower lows and a new low for the whole damn trend here very soon gold oh my god we've got another bearish engulfing sell signal today and a minor downside breakout and um whopper this is going to challenge the lows of last month on june 29th we should be going down to 190 40 1940 and then and maybe quickly and then new lows getting down to the lows of 1,888, that was back in March. This is um, looking pretty de idealistically bearish. And what happened to silver today? It is doing the exact same thing. A huge bearish engulfing, new lows for a couple of weeks, out of overbought conditions, add a little resistance line that I drew up here many days ago. Um, wow. Gold and silver are following each other just great. Bearish, looking for a test of recent lows. And a bearish engulfing for platinum, but it wasn't overbought within the allotted number of back days. So I'm not getting a bearish engulfing, but I meant a red ER cell signal, which is a bearish engulfing, plus the uh, customized overbought levels. So I've got half of what I wanted, just not an official red signal like we saw at the top of that market there and that top and that top and almost that top and that bottom. So it's close, but no cigar. Next, high-grade copper, outside down day, at resistance, going to head south, going to challenge the lows in uh, June and then the lows in May. And after that, probably make new lows for the whole trend. Next, soybeans. Again, I showed this to you earlier. Brand new bearish engulfing at the top of the market, or almost. Yep, today's high is not a new high, but it's super close. 
And it looks like that's the retracement down to at least a support area of 1320, maybe, you know, a little bit lower, but 13 teens or 1320-ish. And we'll see what happens there. That's a heck of a lot of support once we get down to about 1300. Whole bunch of support and at about 10, 20 cent range. That's where it's going. Next. And again, the bearish engulfing on the ER, I'm sorry, the ES didn't work yesterday. That does not mean it can't head south. Let's quick take a look at the one minute charts here on the um, indexes to see if they, and they have made new lows for the day. We're not lower than yesterday's close yet, but only a dollar thirty higher for the spider, almost low and last. We are now unchanged on the DIA. No higher, no lower. Down actually one tick. We're still up a whopping three eighty on the Nasdaq, and still we have a gap up this morning. So coming down to the lows, sorry, the highs of yesterday, we'll close the gap. But if it keeps coming more and more, there's a chance that you could get a gigantic sell signal out of this. The first one to have a red sell signal could be the 10 lower now, DIA. Well, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. We're not even that far away from a new low from yesterday's lows on the Russell 2000. That's going to be the first one to have a bearish engulfing ER sell signal. Then the DIA. Then it's going to be the spider. And last is going to be the Qs. Stay tuned. This could get very exciting. Talk to you tomorrow.